TV 10 podcast episode 0344 uh, coming at you live and uh, mostly mostly clothed and partially sober. <laughs> well, uh, most of us are sober. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, we thank you all for still tuning in to 344 episodes of the TV 10 podcast. I am Tommy Malagro. I'm Bill Frost and mystery guest, please sign in. I'm Melissa Merlot. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Melissa Merlot, our returning champion and uh, special reality show correspondent here. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're, like we're very here. happy uh, she took a moment from appearing on the red carpet at the People's Choice Awards tonight to uh, <laughs> call in. Oh, yes. That reminds me, uh, Miss Merlot. What, yes. uh, what are you uh, wearing uh, this evening to the to People's, the People's Choice Awards? I am wearing a little piggy onesie on the red carpet. <laughs> ah. Ooh la la. Oh, yes. The, the piggy onesie by Christian Duar. That yes. Is so fashionable. That's right. I'm all about fashion. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, what, are we, what are we drinking tonight? Well, uh, let's start with our uh, correspondent here. Uh, Melissa, you were telling us in the... Uh, in our uh, breakout session, before we joined the live WebEx session, uh, <laughs> what are you uh, drinking? I am drinking a Cubra Libra. Ooh. How also fancy. Known, <laughs> also known as rum and coke. We're in Utah's very own outlaw distillery rum. Ooh la la. See? What a Say coincidence. The power <laughs> of advertising on a podcast. What a coincidence. I never thought they would have Outlaw Distillery Rum at the People's Choice Awards, but here it is. Oh, yeah, they're, wow. they're, they're a longtime sponsor of the, the, the People's Choice Awards. And at least uh, and, uh, the, the, you, may, you may remember years ago when the People's Choice Awards, I believe it was on, usually they swapped it around on various broadcast networks. And uh, in the last few years, it's uh, become an E thing. And. Uh, <laughs> So it she, should always be an E thing. Yeah, but uh, Mer- Merlot, you didn't catch the show last week, probably. But uh, we talked about the Miss USA pageant, which was being broadcast by FYI. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. In, be- in between the house flipping shows and uh, remodel my bathroom uh, <laughs> I programs. I no idea. All the networks are just meshing together in this strange, bizarre way. It's just going to be one Absolutely. big network pretty soon. Isn't that, isn't FY, or yeah, FYI, isn't it for like your improvement? Or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they used to, I used to watch a lot of tiny home shows on there, which made me realize yeah. I don't want a fucking tiny home. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. a lot of very cramped spaces. And, yeah, uh, I would watch that show, but uh, <laughs> let's face it, I'm beyond improvement at this point. No, so. no improvement for Tommy Milagro, no. <laughs> no, but, uh, but thankfully, I am improving on myself by having one of our other fine sponsors, what? Uh, Bohemian Brewery. Mm. Uh, now, my, I myself am having the Oktoberfest. Uh, thankfully, it was stashed away in my little bunker. And, uh, oh, that reminds me. We have to check in with Mr. Frost here. How are your pallets of Bohemian Brewery going on your side? Uh, holding up. Doing okay. Okay, do do we need to replenish you at any point? Uh, I think I'm good for the moment. Wait, you, guys, right. you guys have pallets? Pallets and pallets. I got well, a whole garage full of them. Well, keep in mind, uh, Melissa, uh, since he's at uh, uh, TV Tan Studios proper, he is a uh, readily accessible pallets of beer in the fourth basement. Or was oh, it the fifth basement? Which one was God. refrigerated? Yeah, I don't. You have they're the all refrigerated food. anymore. See, I got pl- yeah. I've got plenty of beer. I don't have any food, but I got plenty of beer, so I'm good. <laughs> you guys are the Utah podcast with the best sponsors possible. <laughs> we're it is we're true. the only podcast with the booziest sponsors possible. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, and uh, we 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 have <laughs> Melissa Merlot. We have Melissa Merlot here to uh, talk about a certain reality show, but I want to blow through some of the uh, the new uh, new stuff that's premiering this week first. Uh, coming, right. coming up on Tuesday, we have the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special on Netflix. No, Disney Plus. I f- keep forgetting that Disney Plus owns everything now. It's on Disney yes, Plus. 
And uh, this takes place after the events of uh, the Rise of Skywalker and follows uh, Lego Ray and uh, new 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 adventures just in time to you know for the day life day feast and the holiday spirit and all that Star Wars shit. <laughs> and that'll give way for lots of merchandising. Of course it will, yeah. And also premiering <laughs> on uh, also premiering on Tuesday a new series, uh, Big Sky on ABC. It's a uh, mystery thriller from David E. Kelly starring. Uh, what the hell's his name? Ryan Felipe. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, the former Miss uh, Mister Reese Witherspoon. Is that is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's true. Okay, I didn't. Why did I? Why did I not yeah, not know that? Guy no. who played, the guy who played Twisty the Clown from American Horror Story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember his name, but he's a really good actor. Good for him. Yeah, this is a a a, a crime thriller about a, a truck driver who's kidnapping women along the uh, remote highway in Montana, which just goes to like show you, do. do not go to Montana. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But uh, here's my question about that show. Is this like, uh, well, wait, uh, where is it uh, broadcasting on? Uh, ABC. Okay, so is this their way of counter-programming the Paramount Network's Yellowstone, or no? no? There's no, there's no cowboys here. Just truck drivers and kidnappers and Ryan Felipe. <laughs> it just happens right. to be in Montana. So you and obviously, and gotcha. duh, yeah. Also premiering on <laughs> Tuesday is a new series on Netflix, uh, narr- produced and narrated by Rain Wilson. Uh, it's called We Ooh. Are the Champions. It's about uh, it's a docu series about hyper niche uh, competitions around the world, including uh, uh, cheese rolling. That is a oh. roll it rolling cheese wheels downhill. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, chili eating. This is by heat, not by quantity. Uh, oh. Fantasy hairstyling. That's over the top hairstyles. Uh, Yo yoing, dog dancing, and frog jumping. You guys already know I'm totally on board with this show. I thought you might like that, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, well, the, can you tell we kind of prepared this episode and tailored it just for you? I appreciate that. We might lose you here. Uh, coming up on Thursday on HBO Max, it's the Fresh Prince of Bel Air reunion. But Will Smith isn't in it, right? He is. Oh, he is. In He's it? totally in it. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I saw a picture and it didn't look like he was there. And I was like, I can't do it without him. Yeah, we don't, we well, don't, we don't have dad. He's dead, but we, uh, oh. we have at least one of, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, the moms or the aunts or whatever on there. Mm-hmm. So and, we are, we're losing uncle Phil, but we gain in, uh, Carlton. Oh yeah. We got Alfonso Ribeiro and, uh, of course, DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> oh, shit. Somebody took him out of Mothwall. Yeah, and uh, also premiering on HBO Max on Thursday. Anybody remember Billy Piper from Doctor Who? Yes. Or Rose Tyler. Or uh, also uh, the Secret Diary of a Call Girl on Showtime. Yes. Now our Crickets. fans of the TV Sam podcast will remember <laughs> we highly championed uh, the Secret Diaries of a Call Girl. It was a good show. Long, long ago. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she's back with a new series. Uh, it's a British series called I Hate Susie. It's about a, a famous actress whose life is thrown into disarray when uh, sexy photos of her uh, turn up online after her phone is hacked. And this is some, this is a situation that Tommy Milagro is very familiar with because this, this happened to him oh, yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, this is true. That's why they, we don't have that Netflix comedy stand-up special yet. I'm still working on Brown and Belligerent. <laughs> Hollywood loves a uh, comeback it's, story. It's going to happen. You got to keep your face out of the pictures, Tommy. That's what I've always told you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I will uh, endeavor to be better about that. Yeah. Also on Thursday is uh, the season three premiere of A Million Th- Little Things. If you don't know what this is, it's basically the Is Pepsi Okay version of uh, This Is Us. <laughs> I like the is Pepsi okay version. It's my go-to insult. <laughs> uh, but what's wrong with Pepsi? Pepsi is just fine. Uh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't. I won't turn down a Pepsi Max. Uh, but here's the question: Will it mix well with one of our sponsors? Uh, if you get the ratio right, it'll mix with anything. It'll be fine. Yes. So. Now, we're talking about Pepsi right now, not a million little things. No drinking is going to help. Uh, no, <laughs> n- not at all, no. 
And uh, also yeah. on Friday, it's the return of Animaniacs. Uh, Yaka, y- Yako, Wacko, and Dot, and Pinky and the Brain, and the whole gang, they're back for a whole new run on Hulu. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and I don't know if you saw the uh, the headline from The Hard Times. It's one of our other uh, news sources besides TMZ. It is. Um, they have the headline that Yako refuses to to acknowledge Israel in an updated song about the countries. <laughs> nice. I love the hard time. And uh, going all the way to Sunday uh, on Netflix, it is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. It's a movie. It's a musical. And uh, wow. Yeah, she's um she's out to save her town from a cold hearted developer played by Christine Baranski. <laughs> Okay, two questions. Only One, only two? How did Hall how yeah, there's two big ones. One, how did Hallmark miss out on this golden opportunity? Netflix two, net, Netflix pays more. And two, and here's the bigger question. How much does uh uh how much does Dolly Parton look like a Muppet these days? Oh, only a little bit. Uh, this also okay. stars uh Treat Williams. Oh. Uh, somebody <laughs> dug him out of mothballs around the same time we I don't know. I I, I I got Melissa's attention with that. <laughs> and also on Apparently Sunday, I'm uh, going to wrap up the uh, the preview week here with uh, documentary Belushi on Showtime. Oh wow! We finally get a John Belushi documentary. I don't know if anyone ever saw uh, 1989's Wired. It was kind of a uh, bizarro biopic uh, starring Michael. Isn't that the guy from the Shield? Yep, Michael Chiklis. Yep, starred as John Belushi, and uh, I saw clips of it. And it was very disturbing. It's on YouTube. It's fucking terrible. And I remember um, what I remember watching it in 1989, and just even then thinking, "Oh, this is garbage." Well, and here's the thing, because it was based off of the book by uh, Bob Woodward. Serves, uh, Bob. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Of uh, uh, formerly of the Washington Post, formerly. Uh, the guy that uh, wrote uh, about Nixon and uh, got the scandal go- going here. Yeah, he you al- know, he al- the things he- that Trump avoided. He also wrote <laughs> one of the 500 books about Trumpy the Clown, too. Yeah. The landfill but, uh, is moving- the landfill is going to be filled with Trump books come January 21st. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and that's that's <sighs> the week that's the week in preview there. Now we charged Melissa Merlot because she wouldn't have done it on her own, maybe, uh, with watching the premiere episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which basically takes place in Park City and Draper, but semantics. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Salt Lake City. So you, uh, you watch this garbage, and uh, tell us all about it. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, through my careful research uh, of Bravo, I found out that they signed on to do Real Housewives of Salt Lake City back in 2017. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was just like, how, why? Like, why Salt Lake? I just So I had to watch it just to find out because I feel like they should have done Denver if they wanted to do like a mountain town. Yeah, you know? really? What the hell? <laughs> the other housewife shows, they always go on vacation. And a lot of times they do go to Colorado. So I thought it was weird that they picked Utah. But oh, my God. The reality show casting, like, gods smiled on this franchise because it is fantastic. It is just completely insane. So the first housewife we meet, her name's Jen, and she was Mormon. She grew up Mormon. I'm just going to go over how many of them are Mormon because, I mean, we're Salt like, it's Housewives of Salt Lake City. Of course, yes. Of course, that's what people are thinking. So she grew up Mormon, but then she got married and she converted to Islam because after she was married, she found out that the Mormon church didn't allow black people until the 70s. That was a hard left turn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She converted. And her husband is a University of Utah football coach. And so, of course, they're rich. And she does, like, amazing party planning. So that's pretty much as close as you get to local royalty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she dresses like it. She's like super fashionista. So then we have Meredith, who has her own jewelry making store. It looks like it's in Park City. I'm not sure. And she is very LDS. She's Uh from Chicago, but she moved here and she's hardcore LDS. Okay. 
Oh, dear. <laughs> and then we have Lisa, who I think she converted to, she's from New York. I think she converted to Mormonism. And so she's LDS, but, you know, she okay. made the choice to be LDS later in life. And she, her and her husband, they are good Mormon, but they own tequila. <laughs> they own Vita tequila. They oh, own a shit. Of oh, okay. Tequila. The, and they, and it's they a, it's a, our a unicorn sponsor that we've never nailed down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the unicorn sponsor. And they're working on a vodka. Of course they are. So, yeah, but, but they're LDS, so well, they're making money off of it. Mm, Good for them. Okay. And then All we right. have Heather, who is uh, grew up Mormon, long line of you know the pioneers and everything. And she married into Mormon royalty. The Her ex-husband's family was the family that Howard Hughes gave all his money to when he passed away. If oh. you know that Mormon Howard Hughes connection. This is some oh, wow. serious casting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like her her grand, great grandfather in law was um his bodyguard, like driver, whatever. And so that was why Howard Hughes left that family all the money. Their mm. the family name is the Gay family. So okay. Heather Gay. Wow. But she's okay. Divorced. She got divorced from her husband five years ago, so she is no longer Mormon. And then we get to the, we get to the really juicy ones. These are awesome. So Whitney um, grew up very Mormon, and her and her husband met because they both worked at a multi-level marketing company. Perfect. Of course. Perfect. Right. And well, her husband now, I should say, at the time they were both married to other people, and they had a hot office affair. Oh, nice. Yeah, scandal. Okay. Scandal. So that was uh how she left the church. They both they both were Mormon, married to other people, and then they decided they wanted to be together, so they got divorces and then they got married. Getting the skin so at new skin, skin. yeah. <laughs> That's funny you say that because I did a little research and that was the company they were working for I just when they met. Took me. a wild guess. <laughs> it was new skin. But he is her husband now is uh, CEO of Life Vantage, which is another multi level com- marketing company. Well, with and a name like actually, that, it has to be. <laughs> right. And they're actually under um, investigation right now for, you know, they might be a pyramid scheme. Who might. Knows? Might. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. They I, got like, I like how you couch that might be. <laughs> might be. Allegedly. <laughs> right. I just love that it's the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and of course, there's some kind of multi-level marketing, you know, scandal tied into it. So far, the uh, the casting d- is pretty tight for uh, for Utah, despite none, none oh. of this action actually happening in Salt Lake City. So far, right. it seems like they've uh, nailed I it. I haven't even got to the best one yet. Okay, okay? the best one oh. is Mary. Okay, and Mary. Oh, this is so complicated and scandalous. Okay, Mary's family had a church here, not Mormon, um, they're Pentecostal. And so her grandma was actually the head of the church. And everybody called her grandma Mama, and she was just kind of like the church leader, okay? Okay. And then when Mama had married a guy that was 20 years younger than her, and then when Mama passed away, she left it in her will that... If anything happened to her, she wanted her husband to marry one of her girls because they would take care of him. Okay. Oh, of course. So, okay. <laughs> so Mary is mama's granddaughter. Wow. So, so her widowed husband decided to go to Mary for comfort. And Mary was married to another man at the time. But, you know, with the whole arranged marriage, that's their words, not mine. Well, we're keeping um, it in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Mary decided to divorce her husband and marry her step grandpa. Oh wow! Oh, my God. <laughs> so so that way she she also inherits the church. Well, and he's still part of the church, and so they are both pastors now of this church. And damn, it's not it's not her blood grandpa. I mean, it's a step grandpa, so it's by marriage. So everything's cool. <laughs> so that makes it totally okay. Wow. I yeah. I am nearly interested in watching this now. Only nearly. <laughs> okay, so that's all our housewives. So we only have two that are actually LDS. That's fine. Yeah. 
Okay. And then you have one that's a Pentecostal pre- pastor, one that just, or a couple that just aren't Mormon, didn't really say they convert to anything else, and then Islam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, all the housewife shows, as you guys know, it's reality. There's tons and tons of drama. So they always have weird little petty fights they get in, you know, with each other. Well, of course. But this one has, like, one of the best petty fights any of the shows have had. Mary got upset with Jen one day because Jen came to meet Mary at a restaurant and Jen smelled like a hospital. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And that smell triggered Mary. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> and poor Jen was at the hospital with her aunt who had to have like an emergency amputation or something terrible. <laughs> and then goes and meets Mary and Mary's like, get away from me. I just can't handle that smell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez. So prissy. Super prissy. These women are prissy and crazy and... Meredith, the first episode is the birthday party that Jen throws for her, but it's really kind of a party for Jen. But then Meredith wears this amazing, like, hot pink outfit with fuzzy feather arms that looks like giant pink Big Bird. It's hilarious. Mm. But it's very high fashion. Of course. (laughs) Of course. And it is all in Park City. They do go to Lake Effect, uh, you know, here in Salt Lake. Oh, really? (laughs) It'll be exciting to see, you know, a few of the local places they go to, but oh, I'm excited nice. for the drama because they are just crazy. Cool. So uh, you're you're familiar with all of the uh, Real Housewives uh, series in the franchise, uh, more or less, right? Oh yes. So uh, we're what? First of all, what's your favorite of the uh, the group? Um, all of them. My favorite is the Real Housewives of New York. Okay. Where do you they think uh, where do you think uh, Salt Lake uh, ranks in the? I don't know because too early. I was, I was really surprised by it because I I honestly thought they would just be rich bragging women and it would just be really uninteresting, mm-hmm. but they're all so extra and they have really big personalities. I'm not sure where they're going to end up. Okay, right? Now, it just seems like the craziest. But right after I watched it, I posted something like, ain't no crazy like Utah crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, thank you. thank you. By the way, I was trying to figure out how to title this episode. but <laughs> no crazy like Utah crazy. Yeah. You know, one thing they do on the episode that I think is so Utah, and it might be, uh, might be just me, but they go to like multiple drive throughs Have you ever guys ever done that? Go to multiple drive throughs Um... All the, yeah, like, all the time. Oh, I want Taco Bell, but I also want Wendy's. So you just like go through. Yeah, well, sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes Wendy has the one thing you want, but then uh, exactly. Burger King has the other item you want. And uh, exactly. yeah, in Utah, I think people do that because they have big families, so they can't all decide. So they go to a bunch of different ones. I just do it for myself because I just have no control. I mean, you know, <laughs> sure you want a Whopper, but their fries suck at Burger King, so you go to yeah, McDonald's and get their fries. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> mix and match. I don't see a problem with this. Yeah, they, they I do don't that. see a problem with it at all. <laughs> they do that on the show, and I was like, "Yeah, that's a Utah thing." <laughs> Tight, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I love it. I'm very intrigued. I was pleasantly surprised. I, they are fun. They are all out of their mind, and I think they're going to be really entertaining. Well, what I'm what I'm uh, really sad about is that the soup is not currently on on E. This is where I get all of my garbage reality show content this is how oh, I, th- this is how i keep up on them and currently the soup is not on so uh i might have to watch this myself oh you need you will be you'll enjoy it or at least the first episode just to give it a shot and see how crazy it is it's totally worth it i'm going going to try on? i'm going to try <laughs> why is the soup not on e uh they they launched the new season uh way back in uh the uh, probably February, January, February of the year. Then, of course, uh, you know, the, the, the shit show happened and they went off for a couple of months and they came back. And uh, now I guess they're done for the done for the year, they're, which seems, oh, damn seems terrible. I like the new host, uh, Jade Kata Preta, whatever. Yeah, she's funny. She, she's pretty funny, yeah. Funny. But uh, I'm sure it'll be back. It'll have to be. Yeah. I mean, what's the budget on that show? I mean, how, how can you not exactly. keep that show going? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just a clip show, so it seems yeah. like it would be really easy to film in COVID times. Uh, yeah, I would think so, too. <laughs> Well, well, thanks for that. That's uh, otherwise we we would had had no Real Housewives of Salt Lake content here had you not I'm jumped you in. It's worth it. Just watch the first episode. <laughs> that is why you are our reality show correspondent, uh, Melissa. You're willing to do the things we deign never to do. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, but thankfully, uh, the fact that you drink uh, drink up our sponsors. Uh, makes it all the more worthwhile. So, and, kudos. But, yeah, bef- kudos but, to you. Before we get off the reality beat, uh, of all the shows you're watching right now, what is your current favorite reality show besides Real Housewives of Salt Lake? Love After Lockup, of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my all-time favorite. And it's coming back with Life After Lockup this uh, Friday. Life After Love After Lockup? <laughs> yes. Okay. Life After Lockup is kind of the recap show to show you what happened to all the like previous seasons of Love After Lockup couples. Okay. All right. Like, yeah. The Actually, uh, of their romance. <laughs> can you confirm this for me, uh, Melissa? I I was reading one of my news sources, the Daily Mail, which is like British New York Post, yeah. and. They stated that, uh, and it could be this show, uh, one of the guys uh, left, uh, got on parole, uh, finally met the girl he met in, uh, during lockup, and apparently she was just a, um, uh, what is the word I want to use here, a raging hose beast, <laughs> and at yeah. that point, at that point, uh, said uh, uh, parolee uh, just uh, said, Pull over, walked out because he was feeling triggered. Yeah. And I have to say, that was awesome restraint on the dude. And secondly, the fuck? You didn't figure that out sooner? Yeah, that, that was Dylan and Heather. That was the couple. And let me just tell you about a red flag with Heather. They, She was corresponding with him for five years while he was locked up. And she would mm-hmm. go and, she would go and visit him at the prison and everything. And they had met before he got locked up, but nothing really happened between them. They met, like, right before he went to prison. And then first time she went to meet him in prison and visit him, she had a tattoo of his name already on her. Oh. And then she got another tattoo of his name in a different language. (laughs) (laughs) And then she got a third tattoo of his name in another language. You you want to cover all the bases. Okay. So so there was a little bit of a, you know, warning that she was going to be totally nuts when he got out. (laughs) Yeah, even I can see this, so. He was released, and I think they were together for two days before he just split. And he made the (laughs) right call because she's real crazy. You can even hear her in the producer's voice in some of the scenes. (laughs) <laughs> it's very intense. <laughs> and at any point, did the producers go, yeah, you know, we might have fucked up on this one. Sorry, bro. <laughs> they are fighting in the car, and one of the producers is like, don't get in the car. Don't get in the car. <laughs> like to <Dylan. laughs> it, Oh, Jesus. That sounds like an unusually conscientious reality show producer. <laughs> yeah, I, they're probably new. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be dead in soon enough <laughs> well speaking of uh, the ultimate reality of sports ah mm-hmm. that is sports. quite the segue sir so hit the music and sports so Tommy Milagro go team <sighs> the sports desk of the TV 10 podcast we deliver to you the sport of professional wrestling oh so much to cover so little time Let's just jump right into it. Over the weekend, uh, Impact Wrestling, still a thing, still hard to kill, had their uh, their recent pay-per-view, except it was on their Impact Plus platform, which you can only catch. Impact uh, Plus? On <laughs> okay. Impact Plus. All right. Yep. <laughs> and you can subscribe to it for only seven ninety nine. Not a sponsor. And uh, that all I can say is... Uh, you know, it was a show. It happened, but nothing to write home about right there. Uh, but 
if you're going to really watch uh, some great uh, pay-per-views, which, by the way, Melissa, did I mention, not only do I have an MBA, drink up, but I am also a correspondent for uh, SlamWrestling.net. Ooh, you are? I am indeed. Congratulations. That's exciting. Yes. And my beat right now is, yes, I actually use the word beat. I am covering the United Wrestling Network's primetime live uh, pay-per-view episodes, which you can also subscribe for just seven ninety nine per episode. Not a sponsor. <laughs> or just get a bundle of four episodes for twenty four ninety nine. Okay. It's still not a sponsor, but you get the idea. The point <laughs> is, uh, this next um, this next episode uh, coming up is going to feature a big matchup. I'm talking huge with a Y. That's where we will see uh, in the U- the UWN World Title Tournament the two finalists, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson, going up against Mike Ben. On his redemption tour, it's a pick em. Just be sure to watch the episode, subscribe to it harder, tell them Tommy Milagro sent you, and then come back where I recap the fuck out of it. Dirty that Daddy? That's how awesome it is. Dirty Daddy. The Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson. Yes, sir. I think I saw that on Lifetime last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Daddy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, the guy like is pretty time, awesome, buddy. I have to say. Uh, words cannot do justice. Just do me a favor, subscribe, and see what the Dirty Daddy is all about, especially if he's going up against Now, let's turn into uh, some other things happened over the weekend. So, former WWE wrestler Paige, uh, uh, according to Bleacher Report, uh, has made a, uh, an accusation uh, that her former boyfriend, Alberto Del Rio, uh, used to physically abuse her. Oh, and a, and a point, uh, she said in an interview, uh, she, uh, she claimed that quote, up to six, seven hours a day, you're literally trapped in a certain room and getting your ass beat every couple of minutes. You know what I mean? Now, Del Rio claim, uh, denies the claims and went on to uh, the news source, TMZ, and stated that uh, Paige was the aggressor. But the important thing is uh, Del Rio is uh, is quite the abuser here, or at least accused of abusing uh, since he's been arrested for that. So I guess we know who to believe in this one, don't we, folks? Wow. Uh, and, uh, and And... And because the fun doesn't stop for Paige, and I feel so bad for her, um, uh, Stalker was arrested at the home of Paige and her boyfriend, Ronnie Radke, over the weekend. Uh, according to SlamWrestling.net, uh, the Stalker was confronted by Radke at the front door of their home. Radke held the man until police could arrive and arrest him. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, so... Uh, that's, that's the best news of this by far. Uh, also, in news, um, it's that time again. Yes, just in time for the holidays, WWE decided to release some more talent. Uh, among them, former WWE ring announcer Tony Chimmel and several other employees have been released by the company. So according to WrestlingInc.com, uh, they were... Uh, Tim has been the most uh, well-known ra- uh, well-known name who was released and had been with the company since 1991. And uh, speaking of uh, people who got released uh, and future endeavored, uh, Zelina Vega, um, she was a big name on uh, on Raw and on SmackDown, but then um, she did this little thing. Uh, she she went on to Twitter and uh, always said, a good idea. Su- yeah, <laughs> and she said, "I support unionization." At which point, WWE uh, fired her and again wished her the best in future endeavors. And <clears throat> this is where things are going to get real interesting here, kids. Buckle the fuck up. 
and have a sip of the genius juice while you're doing so. I'm having some uh, from my uh, Oktoberfest. Mm. Yummy. Now, this is where it gets really good here, kids. Now, part of the reason why Vega was upset about this was because, as we've talked about before, certain WWE su superstars had uh, other creative outlets like Twitch, uh, among other things, and uh, Vega was also um, using a platform, I want to say it was OnlyFans or Patreon or something like that, to show cosplay that uh -oh. she does. But WWE, because lately they become control freaks, said, no, you can't do that. Now, her unionization remark, hence why she got let. No. Rich. But here's where it gets really interesting. So minutes after that happened on Twitter, uh, Andrew Yang, uh, who was in the Democratic uh, race and has publicly stated that if, uh, if Democrats uh, got to power, You'd like to be part of the cabinet for the Department of Labor and really go to Vince McMahon to really seek out some of these uh, uh, these issues that talent like Vega has espoused about, um, you know, unionization and to see what can be done to have that happen. Oh, so Vinnie Mac's going to have the Yang gang on his ass? Okay. That, oh, but wait, there's still more. And this is where we're going to go finally uh, with this story. Also, not only does Vega have the support of Andrew Yang and her Yang gang, uh, his Yang gang, um, <clears throat> it was also reported on uh, comicbook.com, um, the president of the SAG-AFTRA, that's the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television, the president reached out to Vega who is that president, you might ask? And I answer, Gabriel Carter, who everyone may remember as Andrea from Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she wrote, uh, Hey, Zelina Vega, thanks for standing strong for labor solidarity. I support you. Please email me, President Carderas, at sagaftra.org. And... Okay. If, no, it's... Yeah. <laughs> if... Andrea from 90210 reaching out to a great worker uh, to show solidarity, which is how we will end this program because workers of the world unite because it's sports. And sports. <laughs> so Tommy Milagro, go team. I, I, I will. God, I cannot make that shit up. I wow. will. I will mention that I uh, on SmackDown on Friday, WWE SmackDown. Uh, these uh, Bailey versus Sasha Banks uh, matchups never disappoint, but there was especially uh, especially intense one on Friday night. Uh, yes. I'd, re I'd recommend looking that one up. Uh, that was the one with uh, Carmella. You're talking about? No, this was the 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 lead off of a uh, SmackDown. But it's weird because my DVR picked up two different SmackDowns, so I don't know which one was real. I'll have to take a look at that. One, oh, one was on Fox, sure. one was on FS1. So maybe they did two SmackDowns. Maybe I'm living in an alternate fucking reality. I don't know. One of them was pretty it's the good. Upside down. One it's of them. The upside down. Sorry. One of them was pretty good. <laughs> and uh, yeah. just look up the good one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hip you to a couple of movies. This is Bill's movie corner here. A uh, cu couple, okay. couple of new movies. Sometimes I uh, drudge up the 80s or 90s for uh, some garbage, but these are two brand new movies that just came out uh, within the last couple of months. One of them is Guest Housed, starring Polly Shore. What? <laughs> I was just waiting for that. Yeah, Polly Shore. <laughs> uh, this uh, this newly newly engaged uh, early 20 something couple. They uh, they buy a house in uh, California, which uh, neither one of them can afford because we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but what? They finally, they look at a whole lot of houses. They finally decide this is the one, but the, the catch is that Polly Shore, a 50 something party animal is living in the guest house for no particular reason. <laughs> yeah. So he's doing his typical Polly Shore roles. Yeah, pretty much. You know. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's <laughs> basically a war between, uh, the, the husband here, uh, Blake played by Mike Castle and, uh, and his, 
is a uh, soon to be wife, uh, Sarah, Amy T garden, who has, uh, the most epic lips you will ever see on television, uh, <laughs> uh, at war with Polly Shore. And along the way, we meet up with people like Steve-O, who is, oh, wow. uh, who is Blake's boss at a skateboard startup, apparently. Uh, wow. uh, Chris Catan has a brief moment as a oh. delivery guy. My oh, so that's what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, okay. We also have uh, Lou Ferrigno and Eric Griffin in here as a uh, cops. Oh, wow. uh, Shut the fuck up. We have Bobby Lee as one of uh, uh, Polly's buds. <laughs> buddy oh my goodness yeah no, no, all, no, you, you, all the good names are buddy buddy thank you bill and thank uh you. also uh you have a whole lot of uh stand-up comics in here uh show up along the way like uh i'm pretty sure i saw i don't see here him here in the cast list but uh felipe esparza i saw him in there oh what Condu- else? Con- conducting the wedding ceremony Oh, like yes. I said, all the big names are in this. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's fucking terrible, but uh, <laughs> it's also my it's also mildly entertaining and uh, somewhat explosive and violent at times. Also, Billy Zane is in here uh, doing a comic tour de force. Oh my god! For, what for, for, for Billy Zane? For Billy Zane, it's a comic Dude, tour de you force. You buried the lead. Man. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it has a uh, pl- plenty of drugs and nudity and uh, explosions and uh, yeah. I can neither. How rec- have I not heard of this? I'm I can so neither bad. recommend this nor not recommend this. I'm just saying it's there. You might want to check it out. And uh, I think 2020. I need to see that. Uh, this is this is a this is a much higher recommendation for this one. This is uh this was released um just uh, what the fuck is today? Just released on Friday. And uh, this is called Chick Fight. Chick Fight? Chick Fight. This is starring uh, Malin Ackerman as a uh, down-on-her-luck woman who uh, gets invited into a uh, secret all-women's fight club. Oh, my God. I'm so into this. Yeah. And like uh, you do. And her, her ultimate arch enemy is played by the uh, the badass of the fight club, Bella Thorne. Yes. And uh, also starring in this are uh, Fortune Feimster. It was fucking great. Oh <laughs> and uh, Kevin Nash, Big Sexy. <laughs> no, what the fuck? Kevin Kevin Nash, Big Sexy, as uh, Malin Ackerman's dad, who's uh, discovering just now discovering his bi curiosity. Oh my god! Yep, this sounds like oh. old. Uh, Malin Ackerman's trainer is Alec Baldwin. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the medic on call at the Fight Club is Kevin Connolly E from Entourage. Oh, Where the fuck geez. has he been? No one knows. Oh. But it's yeah, uh, really. it's pretty damn funny actually. I was I was surprised. It's uh, e- even Bella Thorne does pretty well, and Bella Thorne sucks. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this fortune. Is hilarious. But uh, I have to see it. Fortune Feimster pretty much uh, steals the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, at least yeah, there's that's some not talent. There. Uh, wow. Uh, but the the, the, the real scene happened. stealer here is uh, Dolce Sloan, who's a yes. correspondent for the Daily Show with Trevor Noah, oh. and uh, she's uh, Mullen Ackerman's best friend. She's the one who gets her into the Fight Club. She is pretty much just steals this whole movie right away. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I recommend chick fight. I, as, as, as train wreck, uh, recommendation, I say, uh, try, try guest house because you've probably run out of things to watch. <laughs> I'm totally into seeing both of those. They sound pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of surprising to see, uh, Kevin Nash, big sexy in here. <laughs> God. I, <laughs> I don't know how the sports desk missed this one. I, yeah, I, really. I don't have any answers <laughs> for this. And uh, yeah, so the so we're gonna we're gonna leave the people with uh, anything you would recommend they be watching harder. Uh, let's start with Melissa. What would you uh, highly recommend? I just uh, watched on Amazon Prime. It's been out for a while, but I just barely watched it, and I love it. And if you're way into conspiracies, as you know, I am. I highly recommend it, but watch Utopia. Oh, I know it's about so, it. I haven't started it yet. It's got everything that's been like popping up this year, like wrapped into the storyline. And it's 
really entertaining. Mm. It's funny uh, bel- and it's super graphic and violent and okay. I don't know. It's still like uh, it's not too much, you know. It's like it gets pretty violent and gory, but then it, it'll just have like a really funny scene right after it. So okay. I love it. and lots of conspiracies. Hmm. Uh, but let's also clarify that's Utopia on Amazon Prime, not uh, David Burns American Utopia yes. on HBO. Yes. Just be just be clear what to look for. Yeah, on Amazon Prime. Yes, there's eight episodes. It's season one is out. It's mm. so good. All right, what what do you got, Tommy? Uh, I'm gonna just uh, go with the uh, cheer. Um, lots of. Changes this last episode, uh, but still, Kansas so, City is a messed up place. And so that, that was Fargo, uh, right? Be tripping. That was Fargo, right? <laughs> What's that? That was Fargo, That's right? Right. Yeah, you kind of cut out there. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it must be a connection issue. Or something. All right, we got it. But uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and also uh, Amanda. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, <laughs> he's cutting out again. I'm going to say he's talking about the Mandalorian. I heard Mandalorian in there. Am I cutting out again? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Uh, this yeah. week's episode fe- featuring uh, guest appearances by Katie Sackoff, uh, sci-fi royalty at this point, and uh, the boss, Sasha Banks, who even got to speak a couple of lines. Uh, yeah, but she uh, wasn't her legit boss self. She was just a Mandalorian. So, <laughs> But, but you, you could take off your helmet. Yeah. Oh? I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty... Uh, Pretty interested to hear that the 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 main character Mandalorian is a part of a uh, fundamentalist Mandalorian sect, <laughs> who's, who are a stickler for the rules. Where the the casual Mandalorians are like, oh yeah, we can take our fucking helmet off. <laughs> so they're so the Mandalorian he's like FLDS, and <laughs> the rest of the Mandalorians are kind of like uh, you know real real housewives LDS. They're kind of like yeah, they're a little more footloose. They have party. Yeah. And that's how we circle back. Yeah. <laughs> uh see, I would um let's see, what what am I what am I recommending? What the hell am I watching? Uh of course the Mandalorian and Fargo. And uh also the um oh man. I, I got I got so many flying around, I can't keep track. What I, I just uh, finished up a deep dive into research on uh a top dozen christmas episodes from various adult swim series for the upcoming oh. an upcoming uh content shifter and slug magazine uh nice. amount found some good ones uh you know you have the obvious ones like moral orals best christmas ever oh my god. yeah mo- that mo- sounds like amazing research oh my god it was great because i've seen all of these <laughs> but I, it, it's been a while and most of these are available on HBO Max. Not all of them. Even though HBO Max has made the claims like, oh, yeah, you can watch all the Adult Swim stuff here on HBO Max. Not true. Some of it is only available yeah. on uh, adultswim.com. Like uh, NTSF SDSUV, mm-hmm. who had an episode called uh, Wreck the Malls. is a very Die Hard-esque episode. <laughs> and also uh, Tom Goes to the Mayor, some OG Tim and Eric stuff. Oh, wow. Is, is also available only on adultswim.com. But, oh, uh, crazy. Yeah, so that's what, that's what I've been doing all day. So I've just been doing a, doing a deep dive into uh, Adult Swim classics for Christmas. So look for that. <laughs> well, we got something to look forward to for the holidays, finally. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, who's who, Melissa, you got anything to plug? Any, anything happening over at Area 52? Oh, you know, we're still recording stuff. We're going to have a new episode sometime. Okay. <laughs> so keep checking us out. Area 52 podcast. We're available on all the podcast platforms. Okay. And we're going to try and do more episodes about aliens because, you know, I'm obsessed. Oh, and uh, I, I think I saw something pop up recently. Uh, something new about Skinwalker Ranch. Apparently there's some new show out there or something is happening out there covering Skinwalker Ranch. And I'm thinking, you know, we just had a really boring series on the History Channel. about the Oh, s- nothing happened in it ever. Yeah, yeah, no, a couple of people got headaches. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so uh, you might want to look into that. I think there's uh, 
something something else happening with Skinwalker Ranch, some kind of oh, new I'll, show I'll or I'll something. Totally look for it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, Tommy, what do you got going on? Uh, let's see. I am. Uh, I believe the phrase yeah, you're looking I'm, for is "fuck all." No, actually, no. I'm going to be uh, covering uh, uh, UWM's Primetime Live this Tuesday. And, of course, the uh, the article comes up Wednesday morning on slamwrestling.net. I may have some other interviews coming up soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Really? Just saying. Just saying. And mostly I'm, I'm doing this just so I can get in the good graces and... Uh, of my uh, editor that way once world war three happens then we can get our family over the border all on the bottom traps <laughs> yeah uh slam wrestling.net is based in canada oh so, perfect so tommy is looking to get a journalistic uh, extradition smart yeah see see using my head because i'm <laughs> meanwhile uh one of the one of the outlets i write for they have a uh, they have offices in uh australia so um Maybe I should look into that. Yeah. It's always good to have options, you know. Yeah. Australia. Yo, give, and, me an uh, Australian, uh, give me an Australian uh, visa while you're at it, okay? Um. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we want to thank Outlaw Distillery for the rum and Bohemian Brewery for the beer. And... Uh, Rate us and do the things if you want. If not, I don't care. Uh, on all the platforms, uh, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Podchaser. Um, we're, oh, yeah. I found out we are uh, on uh, Amazon uh, Amazon Podcasts as well. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I know. All, the, all these platforms, and, uh, and yet the millions aren't flocking to us. I don't get it. And, uh, yeah. Range up. That's okay. You got pallets of beer. True. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't need listeners. I got beer. And also, uh, <laughs> reach out to us any way you want. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, all TV Tan Podcast. We'll take any question, any complaint, any uh, nude photos, <laughs> regardless of uh, regardless of gender. Just <laughs> s- what I'm saying is, send us all Ooh. of your dick pics. Careful what you wish for there. <laughs> yeah, not that. Hey, man, it's content. <laughs> I'm sure the Area 52 podcast gets a lot of alien dick pics. <laughs> That's classified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how you're going to be here. Fine. I won't hold back. All right, this is going to be it for episode 03. Uh, what? Zero three four four. Yeah, that's it. And so, the, oh, that means uh, that Bill Frost is a little more genius juice than necessary. So we're gonna say we, we just have so many. Ep- we just have so many episodes. I lose count. Thank uh, you. Thank you for having me on again. I appreciate it. You thank guys. you I'm for back. thank you for joining us, Melissa Merlot, and uh, good night, America. And let me jiggle that handle here and try to get the real house on the drain. Because it needs to be <laughs> lushed. <laughs>